Hey G.I. Joe fans, it is that time of year where Timmer, Half the Battle Timmer, is hosting his annual children's charity drive. If you'd like to participate in his charity drive, click the link down in the description below to find out how to participate in the drive as far as making a donation for a prize. If you would like to make a monetary donation, uh, very simple. The rules are incredibly simple. It is all you need to do is one, make a video of yourself making the donation, or two, take a picture of your receipt. You have to have the proof of one of the two in order to be eligible for these prizes and send it to his email, which will be down in the description as well. Feel free to cover up any important information you don't want him to know on the receipt, such as your address, phone number, things of that nature. Um, at the end of this month, he will hold the drawing. A name will be drawn out of, the hat, out of a hat for prizes. Last year, as you know, I put up or if it should say, as you know, but if you follow his channel, um, last year I donated a um, Tiger Force, a complete Tiger Force Tiger Fly. This year, another Tiger Force vehicle, a complete, well, I should say near complete, because I don't have the windshield wiper. Apologize for that, but it does come with the driver and his gun. The Tiger Force Tiger Cat. Uh, I'm putting this up as a prize. So if you would like to win this beautiful vehicle, so all you got to do is make a donation. Simple as that. So head on over to his channel and check that out. Now it's time for the review. with COPPA, this channel and all of its videos are not directed towards children under 13. Within the meaning of Title 16 CFR 312.2 and are not intended for children under the age of 13. Okay, we got that out of the way. It's not me. I'm sorry. Everybody watches YouTube knows about this by now. So let's go ahead and get into the video, the fun stuff. Hi everyone, this is Joe Motion Videos 82, and it's time for another G.I. Joe toy review. Today, we're going to be looking at a vehicle from 1987. As we know, 87 started getting a little weird as far as the sci-fi element goes. Uh, you know, after the G.I. Joe movie had come out, yeah, they introduced Cobra Law, and that fully immersed us into the world of sci-fi. Not to say that they didn't have a sci-fi element to it before, you know, with the lasers being fired in the cartoon. They did that because they couldn't show real bullets. But um, we were given the character sci-fi in 1986 with the the lime green colors so gi joe or hasbro i should say was leaning a little bit towards that sci-fi element and making it a little more interesting for the sci-fi freaks 
out there. Not freaks as, as in bad, but the people who are really into sci-fi. Because I'm one of the sci-fi freaks. I just love science fiction. So, we were given the Persuader in 1987 and its driver, Backstop. It was a part of the Series 6. It was on the shelves from 88 until 89 when it was discontinued. Um, and I want to add something interesting here with the driver Backstop. He is the only G.I. Joe that is from Canada. The rest are from the United States. That's pretty interesting that they added that element. Uh, his original retail price was $6.89, which, you know, for a driver and vehicle, this, that was a, an outstanding price. Um, I never had this as a kid. I don't recall seeing it on the shelves as a kid. Uh, John had moved to Colorado by then, so I'm pretty sure he had it. But um, I really don't have any childhood experiences to share with you about this vehicle, unfortunately. I know I would have absolutely loved it. Uh, it is defined as a tank. And I got to thinking, why is it a tank? It doesn't have treads. Well, any treads doesn't define it as a tank. Uh, in that case, a bulldozer would be a tank. Uh, tractors would be, some tractors would be a tank. Any form of tracked construction equipment would be a tank. What defines it as a tank is it's mobile, it's heavily armored, and it has a gun. That's what defines this vehicle as being a tank. Well, this vehicle does not only have a gun, but it has two and several missiles. And we'll, we'll cover that uh, when we, we look at it. Uh, I purchased this about a year and a half ago. Very cheap. Um, I think I paid around $12 for it, but the price has gone up a bit. I should say more than a bit. Uh, but there are a lot of them out there. So if you guys want one, it is not any trouble finding it. I found five pages worth on eBay. The big problem is finding the gun. For the driver i didn't see any listed at this time and finding the the file card by itself so the driver's weapon and the gun are the two that i could not find right now they will come up for sale obviously but um, those are the hardest to find at this point of time People are taking these apart and piecing them out and selling the pieces. And I'll cover all that in my uh, next segment, in this segment called Byron's Gripes. So I want to thank all my newest subscribers. You guys know who you are. There, are a few, um, I would name you off, but I'm afraid I'd forget a few of the names. So thank you very much for subscribing. One of you I had a nice little chat with the other day about um, Lady J. So thank you for subscribing. I, I do really appreciate that. And I, I love the conversation that you and I had. Uh, that was pretty neat. I enjoy talking G.I. Joe with everyone. Um, I mean, it's, my life is immersed in it right now. And I, I do just enjoy the thrill of toy collecting and the hunt. The hunt is the best part. My most favorite part is not the collecting but seeing people's reactions when they come into the room and look at my collection and watch their eyes light up watch these people all of a sudden revert from an adult down to a child again and oh wow I had this as a kid my brothers and I played with this and that uh, that's a really good experience um, it happened uh, recently with an exterminator 
would come into the house for our annual um, preventative termite maintenance and uh, he walked into my collection room because I actually found termite tubes grow, growing out of the ceiling and uh, he looked at that and he said oh wow and he just started talking about all these stories that he had. And he was taking pictures. And he said, do you have that big black airplane? I can't remember the name. And I pointed it. It's right above your head. And it was um, the Night Raven. I have him hanging from the ceiling. But um, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review. I really like this vehicle. It's kind of grown on me over time. And there's one particular element to this vehicle I would have loved as a kid. So... Let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, here it is, the Persuader in all of its glory. Let's go ahead and take a look at the driver backstop first. So you can see he is very much a sci-fi looking character. Let's pop off his helmet and take a look at that. So he has this really odd looking helmet almost like a uh, racing helmet but with the elongated face guard uh, the sculpting on it is very nice you see these lines that are sculpted into it uh, they did a, a very good job of it actually make it it looks like it's armored get that into focus here uh, looks like it has rivets, rivets in it. And this stripe, or this groove going along the back, looks like you could affix some goggles to it. Pretty cool uh, helmet. It's a uh, hard plastic, so it does fit on the uh, figure's head pretty tight. And as you can see, up in here, there's a little bit of black along this groove, so it is scraping his hair off, which I don't like. So I keep the helmet on. I don't like to take it off very much. And next he came with this silver pistol made out of a soft plastic. It looks like it had a bone handle or bone grip on it at one time. It is a six shot revolver. No trigger guard though. So he's asking for some trouble with that. The cylinder looks like it pops off. Kind of like a uh, Colt Navy revolver from the 1800s. Uh, the figure himself, multicolored. Uh, the colors do work together quite well, so I'm not too angry at that. Um, he has this right at the top, this um, gray um, armor with a, looks like a trench knife sculpted onto the front. The armor goes all the way around to the back over this green ribbed shirt. Uh, is uh, these burnt orange gloves. Uh, nice pouches here on the front. He has a utility belt loaded with pouches. You see those all around, all these tan pouches, a canteen on the side. Comes with two more pistols. They really loaded this guy up. Now slung along his legs. The Paint application go, does go down to these very very nicely sculpted holsters. And uh, he has another knife, looks like, down on his over his spat or his boot cover, which is in this burnt orange color as well, which covers black boots. Very nice looking figure all in all. The colors are fantastic. It works with this figure. Uh, if... They would have done it completely in green uh, with his pants being green with the splashes of red. I think he would have been a bit bland, personally. His face sculpt, he does look very young, has this baby face. Black hair, eyebrows, and black paint apps for his eyes. But all in all, he is a great action figure. The helmet does snap on and stay on him very firmly. I really like this guy as an action figure. All right, the file card reads, codename Backstop. He's the Persuader driver. His file name is Levin 
Robert A, primary military specialty armor, but you notice he does not have a serial number. Secondary military specialty, mechanized infantry, birthplace, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Middle paragraph reads, backstop injured so many opposing players in junior league hockey that his family had to move to the United States to, to escape angry parents. During his adolescent years in Detroit, he boxed in the Golden Gloves until he was barred from competition. He spent two terms as an undefeated wrestling champion in high school, simply because no one would get into the mat with him. So he did all of that even before he was in high school. He was Golden Glove champion as a teenager. This guy is mean, and this is a bit overwritten if you ask me. After a short career in Demolition Derby, Backstop found his true calling in the Army and eventually joined the Joe team. So, he's a, a rough guy, really gets into his sports. Uh, his parents had to evacuate him from Canada because he was beating all the kids up. And he gets here to the United States and beats all the kids up in a boxing ring. And that's all before high school, all before the age of 14. I think he has some uh, underlying aggression issues, maybe. Bottom paragraph reads, Don't mess with backstop. Even though he's had more broken bones, ripped tendons, and severed arteries than anyone else in the Joe team, he's still strong enough and strong-willed enough to break, rip, or sever something of yours. Okay, talk about an overwritten file card. Uh, how did he get into the military with all those broken bones? Um, out of all the file cards, this is the one I le least like the most. This is the first time reading it. Actually, uh, when I got it in the mail, I didn't read it. I just hung it up on the wall with the rest of my file cards. So... Um, yeah, this is an interesting one. But you'd see that it was cut off from the back of the box. Uh, this is how it would have looked. The art would have looked on the front. Not real appealing artwork either. But it is what it is. Um, it's quite interesting. Okay, so looking at the Persuader. Very interesting tank. Uh, I'll point out the feature I would have really liked as a kid. So I'll lay out these sandbags. And let's go ahead and take a look. This feature right here. I don't know, showing up very well, but th this is independent sus suspension uh, with the wheels. Fire my set designer. Uh, the wheels um, independently move on a, a suspension rig. You can see how it rocks back and forth. That would have been such a cool feature for me as a kid. I like it even now as an adult. Oh, it came with six identical missiles, three on each side. These missiles are known as the, a DART, um, SAM 37, 250-pound missile. They are all identical, made out of a very hard plastic. There's no left or right side to them. They slot onto the back or onto the side with these little grooves that go right in here. They just slot on there. Not very well, I might add, because they, they do fall off quite easily. And that is an annoyance for me. Um, that would have bugged me a lot as a kid. But the tank itself has this nice rotating turret. Goes around 360 degrees. Has this elevating laser cannon right at the top. And 
on the over the driver's head is another rotating laser cannon that's slightly hindered by the turret. Uh, this does not elevate, but it does hold two figures. Backstop himself could fit into the vehicle. You have to move the, the guns out of the way. He slides right down into the seat, and he's pretty nicely protected. I uh, wish he would have fit down in there a little bit further, because one glancing shot could go right up into his head, but that's why he's wearing that armored helmet. Uh, you could The sweeping angle of this tank is really cool, very futuristic looking. Uh, here on the front uh, is a push bar that has a winch on it. It's not intended to do anything. It's, it fits kind of loose. I would think that this would be like a flail um, to detonate landmines, but um, I don't have the blueprint, so I couldn't really read the, the use for it. But um, I do recall the name of the missiles from another person's review. So here on the front, we have a tow cable on each side that's sculpted on and a nice uh, grid pattern or a diamond pattern sculpted here. It could fit one, two, three Joes on each side on these foot pegs. Uh, the back foot peg is kind of interesting. You have to set the figure kind of at an angle right here. But um, they're kind of thick, so I wouldn't force a figure on it these days, um, fear of cracking their ankle. The turret, you can see it says United States. If it was from Canada, it'd say um, Canada on it. it. has five Cobra logos. On the back is pretty cool. It says Dead Eye. A little bit of graffiti on there. The gunner does fit down inside of this uh, of the turret pretty plain on the inside there a nice little sticker app would have been been great but uh, he sticks out pretty far from the back uh, underneath the turret here on the back is a non-removable engine cover on the right side is uh, right here is the gas holder or the hole for the gas tank so you could fuel it up your typical GI Joe tow hook you can see a missile just fell off by handling it uh, each wheel is hooked on independently so they they roll separately from each other and um, they're locked onto to um, this suspension system the back holds six wheels and the front holds four in the bottom, you see it has the stamp 1987 Hasbro Incorporated, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Um, very nice. This is a, a cool tank all in all. I, I do enjoy owning it. I would have loved this as a kid. But I know the missiles falling off would have drove me insane. Would have really got my OCD going. But um, I do recommend that you guys get this. It... It's great as a display piece, fun to play with. Uh, this particular tank was again used later on for Night Force, uh, but it didn't come with the driver. Very nice vehicle altogether. Uh, I want to add that the cannon here is made out of a soft plastic, but be aware of the tabs up here in the front they do snap off that one broke recently when it uh, fell off of a shelf I was trying to move and there goes the rest of the missiles falling off but uh, I do highly recommend that you get this it is a great vehicle uh, could have used a few more sticker apps especially right up here in the front could have looks like that could have been a, a window of some sort but it is a tank.
So, what could I say? You don't have windows on tanks. But even a sticker with a, a viewport right there would have been nice. So, there you have it. There is the 1987 Persuader. All right, that was bugging me about the front push bar, so I looked it up on yojo.com. It is called the Reinforced Front Tubular Push Bar. So, there you have it. It wasn't like a, um, a flail to disarm mines. But since I was on Yojo, I decided to pull up pictures of the Persuader for you, um, how it would have looked boxed. So, let me pull those up real quick. All right, so I also pulled up the comic book cover, and that was issue number 68 where it made its first appearance. Oh, I do like this vehicle quite a bit, um, despite some of the shortcomings of the missiles falling off. It is a great toy to have. It displays well. I just wish I had the Night Force version. Uh, it is completely fabulous. Uh, just don't have the words for it. All decked out all in black. The guns and the push bar are all um, in red. Beautiful uh, vehicle. Both versions. Night Force, of course, is a lot better because it's all in black. Anything you paint black looks cooler, right? Am I right? How many of us fought over Snake Eyes as a kid? I rest my case. <laughs> it just stood out. He stood out from the rest of them. So, um, with this vehicle, um, just be careful of um, the missiles. Uh, they do fall off quite a bit. I don't know if you would want to display them with the missiles on. I don't. I keep them stored in a plastic bag and tuck that bag inside of one of the crew compartments. Of. And be careful of the tab underneath the main gun. Uh, if it comes disassembled when you assemble it, be careful not to put pr too much pressure on that because it will, it, it possibly could snap off. Uh, but all that being said, let's go ahead and get into my favorite segment Byron's Gripes. Yeah. Um, there are quite a few of them out there. They're five pages worth. And uh, for those of you just joining me, I do this segment to give everybody an idea of what to expect in prices. I also do it for the entertainment value. Uh, I use eBay only just for the convenience of it. Yeah, I'm not picking on eBay, nor am I picking on the sellers. But uh, if you are out shopping for G.I. Joe, you know how ridiculous some of these prices are. So I, I poke fun at just that, the ridiculous prices. Uh, there's no reason why these should be so expensive. Yes, G.I. Joe, well, actually the whole vintage toy market is smoking hot right now. Eventually, the prices will come down. Um, I'm starting to see that trend happening, especially with last week. Uh, in last week's review, uh, a lot of the prices were starting to come down on that particular toy. And I've seen prices drop a little bit on this one. So... If you're looking for this on the aftermarket, finding it complete is not a problem. Finding it cheap can be. Finding a complete figure, again, not a problem. So, if you just need the figure complete, uh, that means helmet and gun, he comes with a price of $12.99 to $14.99. That's not too terribly bad. Uh, $12.99 is respectable. $14.99 is the high end of the respectability. Complete with the file card. $13.95. So why spend the $14.95 or $99 when you could buy one of the file card for $1.05 cheaper? So it's $13.95 too. Here we go. $30. Bucks. Miser. 
Can we say that together? It's getting near Christmas, so Mr. Scrooge, lower your prices. Uh, the thirteen ninety five. I'm putting that up with the deal of the day. Uh, complete vehicle driver, his accessories, and a file card. Oh, this is sweet. Deal of the day on both of them. Twenty two dollars to twenty five dollars. Jump all over that, guys. Fantastic, very good deal. His missiles go from a dollar twenty-five to a dollar ninety-nine each. Uh, a complete persuader with no action figure. Seventeen forty-five to thirty-five dollars. Seventeen forty-five deal of the day. Thirty-five Scrooge of the day. Uh, just because it says G.I. Joe, it does not make it expensive. Okay, uh, seriously, the ones that I would expect to be a little more expensive are the ones that are more popular. Uh, Snake Eyes, version 1 and 2, those fetch a premium. Why? Um, with some experience shopping toys, it is known as a short pack. He, there was only one per case. When the rest of the case, let's say you have 30 pieces, the rest of the case, 29 pieces, would be multiples of the other action figures that were re released during that year. Snake Eyes was a short pack. Outside, he's just cool. Some of the mail away exclusives, the Star Brigade, the Star Brigade with the gold head, the, the blue storm shadow, the, the blue snake armor. Uh, you know, those, those figures fetch a premium because they are a mail away exclusive and not too many people had them. The European exclusives are more, or the European figures like the European Tiger Force are more expensive over here in the States than they are over there okay so continuing on complete with the box and blueprints seventy dollars to ninety nine ninety five seventy bucks is a deal of the day ninety nine ninety five I you know from my experience I would say that's the high end of being normal um, but if you're a, a box collector, jump on that. That's that's a great deal. I do have a few things in boxes and still on the card. It's nice to display those. Uh, the helmet. Can't read my own writing. His helmet. Uh, the only one I found listed, four ninety nine, and um, that's pretty decent. An incomplete figure, no accessories whatsoever, six ninety-five to seven dollars. That's okay. It's a vehicle driver. There aren't so many of them out there as they, there would be a carded figure, so that's a pretty decent price. A single wheel. These wheels are pretty durable. Um, the the struts that they're locked onto, pretty durable. Um, the wheels don't come off. They're made out of a hard plastic. They're pinned on by mushroom clips. That's something I didn't point out. I apologize. Uh, but if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you do need a wheel, it's five bucks. By some off chance that you need one, if it got torn up or melted or something, you do find them melted sometimes. It's weird. Somebody tries to damage it, I guess, and play. Uh, the blueprint. $3.99 to $7.99. $7.99 is a little high as far as blueprints go, but um, $2.99 or $3.99, I should say. Very good price. The figure complete with a file card. I singled this one out. It's the seller's wanting $32. It tells me a few things. The seller either came across it at a yard sale and says, I know this is G.I. Joe, so it has to be expensive, or the seller is just greedy. 
or has an emotional attachment to that and is wanting to get as much money as he can out of it. Who knows? Who knows what the thinking is to these people? I think it's very unreasonable. It makes it hard for us average guys with a, a wife and kids, two cars, mortgage, or rent payment. And it makes it hard for us, the, the little guy, to co to collect. I don't mean a little guy to be demeaning, but for us, you're just your average nine to five knuckle buster to collect these toys and share that joy with our children, show them what we played with as a kid and get them interested in it. Yes, I said children, Kappa. Uh, to, to share this with our kids, to get them excited and and share a part of our lives. It makes it hard for, for us guys like that, uh, mothers and, and fathers, to do that. And I know there's a lot of female collectors out there, which is really cool. If you're a single female collector, call me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it, um, it makes it hard for us to collect. And uh, I had mentioned in a few videos back that I work in healthcare. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm, I'm rolling in dough. I, I'm not. Um, it, my work is very seasonal. I'm a respiratory therapist, so just a few months out of the year, I'm making a decent income. But for the warmer months, work is kind of scarce for us, so I have to really budget on what I, I have uh, during the, the winter, store up my winter fats, as it were, to live off during the spring and summer. So, um, to continue on, uh, the wheel, the uh, you get four wheels in, with the suspension, that's the front suspension, 299 to 499. And just the, the four-wheeled suspension bracket itself, $1.99. So there are a lot of pieces and complete vehicles out there. The action figure is out there. So if you're interested, there you go. There are the prices out there. Um, hit up your local vintage toy stores. Uh, see if they have it out there. Um, I, I support local business, that way the money goes right back into the community instead of um, going to a big box store and buying online first. It, um, it just helps out. So there you have it guys, the 1987 Persuader. I hope you liked this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, it'll really help out. Uh, also, share this video with your friends. Um, follow me on social media. I'm out on Twitter if you want to uh, follow me out there at Joe Motion Videos 82. If you'd like to shoot me an email, I'll have that down in the description. Uh, I do hold, hold giveaways on this channel. I hold giveaways for my channel supporters separately from the rest of you. Uh, if you subscribe, you're automatically entitled to a giveaway. Um, the channel supporters get their own because they've supported me um, financially or they've sent something into the channel for me to review. Uh, if you do want to send something in, my uh, address, my mailing address will be down at the bottom of the screen as well. It's not necessary, but it will, will really help this channel out immensely. Um, as these toys, as you know, are, are expensive and... Um, it won't only add to this collection, but um, that I will, I buy things for giveaways and they are good prizes. Just follow my other giveaway videos. I, I don't give away something that I wouldn't keep myself. So any help would be greatly appreciated. And um, all that being said, this is Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. Remember, be kind to everyone, especially be kind to animals. And don't forget to hit, hit up Timmer's channel about the um, children's charity drive. I'll have all of his information in the description below as well. Until then, 
Stay safe, everybody. We'll see you next week for another great G.I. Joe toy review. This is Joe Mosher Videos 82 signing off.